Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now every year for the last couple of years since I've been making YouTube videos I have done an everyday carry video just to show you the sort of things that I carry around with me day to day. I know it's of interest to some folks and there's a whole genre of this on YouTube for those who are keen to learn more but this is the sort of things which I carry with me every day just to give you an idea of the things which I make use of in my life. Now this is just so you're aware early spring here in the UK it's March so the weather is transitioning from very cold to very average um, generally speaking I carry more things with me in the winter obviously than in the summertime so just to give you an idea of where we are at the time of year now first of all um, to carry things around I don't just carry things in my pocket you know life is more expansive than the things that I can just stuff in the pockets although of course some things are there and I'll tell you what I carry around but I do have a bag as well and in the winter time I tend to carry a leather valise summertime I often transition to a smaller sort of leather briefcase which I can pack things into but in the winter time I carry a good old sturdy leather valise or hold all and this is a leather one which is made by Paul Costello a British London based company and I have had this briefcase uh, sorry this valise for more than 10 years and I have to say I treat it once a year just by putting some uh, leather conditioning cream on it keep it nice and clean dusted you know things like that it gets better every year so even though it cost a couple of hundred quid when I initially bought it it's nice and large and voluminous it's perfect for a weekend hold all last weekend I went to Oxford for the weekend and this was the only luggage I needed to take but day to day it's perfect for carrying the things which I need inside so let me show you what I've got inside so as I say it's springtime so I'm still carrying some things to keep warm um, my preferred glove of choice and if you've watched the the channel for any length of time you will know that I often wear leather gloves I love them uh, and these are gloves nice unlined leather gloves in a sort of chestnut color and these are from South Coon gloves in Somerset I get loads of requests to send people the link to these gloves because they're very modestly priced and excellent quality uh, they only cost about 30 British pounds I've had this pair for two years I've worn them constantly and I have to say there's virtually no signs of wear on them so they are my preferred glove for this time of year also in my hat in my in my bag rather there'll be a hat now typically it's going to be something like a flat cap uh, I don't wear baseball caps to be honest flat caps is about as minimal as I would go when it comes to style and this is a black woolen felt cap by Kangol so good traditional brand had it for 15 years lovely little hat keeps the head the bonds warm when you need it also inside my bag the practicalities of life right we need to stay hydrated and I've always pretty much got a water bottle in there nothing fancy I don't go for any you know if I can pare things down to the simplest possible level I will and this is a water bottle by a Dutch company called Dopper and I was gifted this water bottle in 2017 when I attended the United Nations Public Service Forum I'm reading it off the side of the bottle uh, in uh, in The Hague in the Netherlands and everybody who attended all the delegates got given a free water bottle I have carried this water bottle ever since I really like it because yes it's not massive it's a nice size but also if you're a stylish gentleman it splits into two and you get a nice cup where you can drink from so should you wish to do so you could fill it up with gin or whiskey as well as well as water and it makes just a practical lovely little water bottle very modestly priced available globally now uh, but Doppa water bottles um, I've got a couple now great little items love them okay what else is in the bag what helps me through my life well the last time I did a video like this was about a year ago and I was using a Kindle I think quite a lot then although 
recently I have transitioned to reading more traditional books. So I've always got a book of choice in my bag for those occasions when I'm traveling or waiting for something and there's time to kill. So at the moment, and this is as a direct result of a recommendation from a viewer who dropped me a comment, um, this is a book called uh, Dress for Success by an author called John T. Malloy. It's an American book. Uh, I picked it up from eBay for, oh God, it was just a couple of pounds. It's outrageously cheap. Um, I think it's out of print now, but you know, there's still stuff you can get out there. And this book was produced, I'm going to say in the 1980s. Let me just check. 1988, it was copyrighted. This is a book talking about traditional elements of men's style, loads of imagery, and even though it's outdated, because it's from 1988, which was actually the year that I turned 18 years of age, um, and it's very much centered around the power dressing of the era, there are some really good tips, some academic research about the way people dress and the value of dressing well. I'm really enjoying working my way through this book. So, uh, great little book. Always got a book of some kind in the bag. So, what else have we got? Notebooks. I'm a prolific writer, I have to say. I like, I'm old fashioned, right? I'm from an analog era. And even though I often do have a MacBook Pro in here, which is my preferred laptop, I also have books, notebooks of choice. Now, at the moment, I normally have two books on the go, notebooks. I have a small book, which is my sort of scribble book. You know, this is my ideas that I'm knocking out, things which come to mind, and I tend to write things in here, small things, you know. Um, at the moment, this is a moleskin book, so a moleskin hardcover in forest green. And yeah, as I say, this is my sort of to hand notebook, nice and small, easy to carry around in any bag. As always, I have a second notebook, which is a larger format book, which I tend to use for writing uh, more in-depth articles and things like that. So typically, if I, I don't use a script at all for the videos that we share here on the Chaps Guide channel, what I tend to do is write notes. And although they're not a script, they will give me an indication of the things that I would like to say in the video. So if there's any research I wish to refer to, I'll put some notes for that. It's not verbatim words that I will speak in the video, it's just my ideas and thoughts. And I also have a much larger format book. And this, I've been trialing one of these um, this last sort of couple of months. This is a Mont Blanc luxury leather covered notebook. It costs something over a hundred pounds, I think, in full price. I picked it up in an outlet store in Bista Village in England. Those people who are familiar with outlet stores are probably familiar with that name. And this cost me in the region of 60 British pounds. Now it's very high quality. I have to say the, the leather cover is luxurious. And when I first purchased it, took it out of its uh, wrapper, it exuded a beautiful luxury smell of quality leather. That's dissipated over time, obviously, but the paper quality is excellent. Uh, now, I do tend to write using a fountain pen, so I really appreciate good quality paper, which doesn't allow my pen to bleed through to the next page. So Mont Blanc, they've delivered an excellent notebook, but I won't be buying another one because for the cost point, um, it's too expensive, right? So much as I like it, I wouldn't be paying that much money again because Moleskin, which is the brand I normally use, the larger um, notebook I tend to have as well, um, their paper is almost as good and a fraction of the price. So there you go, those are my notebooks. Now, if I've got a notebook, I need something to write in there. And I tend to carry a couple of pens in the pocket, two pens generally. I really enjoy using a fountain pen, but it's challenging to carry a fountain pen in the pocket without a concern of it leaking or you know, being awkward to carry. There is a way you can get around that, and this is a pen I've been using for about a year. This is a German company called Caveco, and this is the Caveco Sport fountain pen. And as you can see, it doesn't look much like a fountain pen. It's rather small. It's only about four inches in length. This is a plastic model, but they come in different dif uh, different materials. You can buy them in titanium, brass, whatever, um, steel. Plastic are the cheapest, cost about 20 British pounds. And the beauty of these, 
they unscrew, it opens up, you flip it together, and it connects into a very comfortable and practical fountain pen. And I've been using this for about a year. It is um, cartridge fed, so very easy to use, very practical. And I, this really works for me. You can just screw it up, put it in the pocket, get it out when you need it. And certainly if you like taking notes on the go, a great little pen, very modest price. So all you do, pull it apart, screw it up, there we go, safe and secure, in the pocket, no concerns, so you get the, the advantages of a fountain pen with the comfort of a sort of biro. And I do like a biro, particularly when I'm knocking out some notes. So if I'm on the train and I just want to, something's come to mind, a video or work that I want to do in the future, I just want something I can grab easily and write immediately. And even though that Caveco is pretty straightforward to operate, they make another pen. This is the Caveco Sport, but it's the Biro version. And lovely, small and compact. It's just a click opening. So there you go, you're ready to knock on. And nice, easy, smooth writer. Um, it's slightly thicker than most Biros, so it's nice and comfortable and ergonomic to grip. And yeah, great for taking notes. Uh, and then when you're done with it, because of its compact size, slips easily into the pocket, boom, you're ready for the next thing which might come your way. So, what else is in the bag? A uh, couple of practical things, really. I'd normally carry, I haven't got it today because I've showed it in a previous video before, but I tend to carry a MacBook Pro. I've had it for a few years now, still going strong, great bit of kit, uh, but as you know, the batteries, they don't last so long as time goes by, and I tend to carry a power bank, and this is a Goji power bank, um, just a standard one, it's got sort of three outlets, ins and outs. Really strong and powerful. Uh, strong enough to, you know, recharge the MacBook Pro, my iPhone. Uh, I actually, when I'm out camping, I run a lamp off this as well. Because if, if whatever you've got has got a USB attachment, this little fella is perfect. And in a recent power cut we had in this area because of a storm, um, I ran a lamp off this in my home all night. And me and the family, we gathered around the dining room table and we you know we played a game of monopoly entirely powered by the light from my power bank so always worth having a, a and again about 30 british pounds so modest price great reassurance works perfectly what else is in here not a great deal um, folding umbrella nothing exciting but you know i do live in the uk and it is necessary to be prepared and finally in the bag my glasses I have to say, gents, I turned 52 the other day and it has become necessary for the first time in my life, having had superb eyesight, uh, now for me to wear glasses when I, when I read. Um, only sort of short distance work. It just makes things look a lot closer. I can tell the time a lot more easily with my watch. So I always carry my specs, just standard sort of eyeglasses. I don't wear them all the time. Uh, whoops. But uh, yeah, they, they work. They do what I need to do sign of the times I'm afraid. However, there are times when eyeglasses are not just for looking through, they are required to look cool. And I have done a review on these spectacles, these sunglasses, um, last year. This is a pair of Entourage of Seven Beacon sunglasses. And even for sort of spring days like today, where the sun is rather high in the sky and you need a bit of, you know, protection to stop you from squinting, these are very stylish, very classical. They've got this sort of amber acetate appearance. They're handmade in Japan. They are expensive. They do cost about 300 pounds, but they've got superb optics. And uh, this is just, they're non-prescription. They're just normal sunglasses. I find these incredibly stylish. They look great. They perform fantastically. And to be honest, when something works that well, looks that good, I'm prepared to pay the premium to have a high quality item. So those are my specs, Entourage of Seven. A little bit niche. Um, it, it, did, it was difficult to track them down. These were, I got these imported from Germany uh, from a website and they did cost me a couple of quid on the import tax. You need to be careful about that. But uh, still, excellent glasses, looked apart, almost worth summer uh, arriving to be, you know, look stylish. So that's pretty much everything I keep in the bag. What have I got on my person, which would interest you? Um, well, 
I always have a hank, a handkerchief in the pocket, always. You'll never catch me without one, so always quite useful. In the other pocket, still carrying a face mask. In the UK, the COVID restrictions have gone a while now, but you know, you still go to places and people um, prefer you to wear a mask. So I always carry a mask in the slacks pocket. In my back pockets, I've got an iPhone 12 mini. I've had this one for just over a year. Excellent phone, I have to say. I like the mini size. I don't like these big bulky phones, which are, you know, virtually a tablet. Um, so I like the iPhone mini. Classic, elegant, good camera. Some of the, the B-roll that you'll often see on my videos, I film with um, the old iPhone uh, 12 mini. Um, it's, you know, excellent quality, so can't complain about that. In the other pocket, my wallet. Um, I've gone somewhat smaller. I think last year I was carrying an Aspinall uh, two-fold, bifold wallet. During the course of the year, I did transition over to this Carl Friedrich wallet. I was contacted by the brand and they asked me if I would review one of their products. And this was what they sent me. This is called the Carl Friedrich Swanfield wallet. This particular one is in a cognac color. And I probably had it for getting on for a year. It's made of a vegetable tanned leather. And that is of very high quality. It's Italian made. And I have to say, I love this wallet. You know, I purchased an expensive wallet not long before I was sent this one. And after I reviewed this one, I put that other wallet away and this has become my total wallet of choice. It's nice and small. It carries up to seven uh, cards, just enough room for a little bit of cash in this cashless world that we're living in, that's fine. Um, and I just find it very tactile. I notice the patina is getting better as time goes on and it feels beautiful. You know, it's got a lovely smooth touch. Slight aroma still of the leather, which is nice, but uh, yeah, lovely, lovely uh, wallet and fits beautifully into the back pocket and it's nice and classy so when you're going to uh, dinner or having a coffee with friends and you offer to buy the drinks or whatever it's nice to have a beautiful wallet and it's um i have to say this one they were kind enough to include personalization so i do have um the word chap emblazoned on the front in gold so it has that nice elegant touch as well uh, Finally, there's only one item which I normally include in these videos, and that's my timepiece. And right now, I am wearing my Rolex GMT Master II. Um, this is the Pepsi version, which has the gold and the red on the bezel. I've had this watch probably for about four to five months at this point, and I know this is a really sought after watch. I was fortunate indeed to get it last year, somewhat unexpectedly. Um, and you know what? I was a bit skeptical. I thought, well, you know, I, I already owned a GMT in the, uh, the two-tone root beer version. I thought, what's this Pepsi all about? I, you know, it can't turn down a watch of this nature because they're hard to find these days. So I bought it thinking it might be something that I lay down in the safe for a bit of, you know, future investment, if you want to think of it like that. I have to say, when you start wearing the Pepsi, and this one's on the Jubilee bracelet, it is such a joy to wear. It is a wonderful daily wear at watch. So comfortable, so attractive. And as somebody who now has to wear glasses occasionally when I read, when you look at a watch, sometimes, you know, when the dial is a bit messy, lots going on, it's hard to tell the time. Not with this baby. Very clear, easy to read indices. There's no question when you're wearing this watch, you know, what the time is. And it, it I guess it is a bit of a style statement because it's quite a, a bold watch having strong colors you know red and blue on a watch is a very definitive color um, i don't wear it all the time i certainly wouldn't wear it with a suit it's too brash for that but when i'm out and about normal life i definitely uh, do wear it all the time um, not worried about scratching it not it's definitely not an investment piece this is a daily wearer alongside my other watches and uh, yeah I've, I've i really am seen without my pepsi these days it is a lovely watch to wear. So I think that's it. That is a kind of an update to my everyday carry because as I say you know you've seen previous everyday carries in the past and um, just I'm always 
looking to find something a little bit better, a little bit more nuanced, something that will fit in with my life a little more succinctly perhaps. So I hope you've enjoyed this review video really of the things that I carry around with me. If you have enjoyed the video, I would encourage you, of course, to give us a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, click the old red button, come on the journey with us. You'll find lots of other interesting chat material coming up. And if you'd like to practically support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. You will find a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page in the show notes below. So, is there something that I should be carrying? Is there something that I've missed out? If there is, let me know in the comment section below. As I say, I take note of what you viewers tell me and I will source things, try things, give them a go. That's the pleasure of sharing our knowledge here on the Chaps Guide channel. Until the next time, as ever, take care of yourselves and I will see you soon 